Hey everyone, Merry Christmas and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we will discuss another problem from the CF specialist sheet and the problem name is pleasant pairs. So the problem says that you're given with an array a1 to an consisting of n distinct integers. You need to count the number of pairs of indices ij such that the condition that ai into aj equals to i plus j is true. That's the problem statement. Now let's take one example. So when we're talking about 3, 1, 5, 9, 2, the answer is 3 and why is it 3? So it says 1, 2 is a good pair of indices. So in at index 1 we have the number 3 and at index 2 we have the number 1. So 3 times 1 equals to i plus j. The ith index here is 1, the jth index is 2. So yeah, this condition is true and therefore 1 gets added to your answer. Similarly for 1 and 5, index 1 and index 5. 3 times 2 is 6 and this is index 1 and this is index 5. So 1 plus 5 is 6 and 3 times 2 is also 6. Index 2 and 3. So 2 plus 3 is 5, the indice, sum of the indices is 5 and 1 into 5 is also 5. And that's why the overall answer is, is 3. At this moment, the problem statement should be clear to you. I would recommend try so these two sample input output as well if the problem statement is not clear. And try to solve the problem using a brute force solution. Try to make some observations. If, the, if you're able to fully solve it, that's great. Leave a like, leave a comment. If you're not able to fully solve it, then what I would say is try writing down the observations and see if your observation aligns with the observation in this video tutorial and then you can like the video after that. So I'll share one of the brute force solutions and the observations that I made while trying to solve the problem. So this is the brute force solution that came to my mind. Since the problem talks about pair of indices, what I can do is I can just go over all of those for every index i in 1 to j, 1 to n and every index j in 1 to i plus 1 to n. If this condition holds true, add 1 to your answer. This is very obvious. It's a n square brute force solution. So now we'll try to enhance this, optimize it further. So first observation is that it's not a normal array. The integers are actually very well constrained. And first thing, the most important part is all integers are distinct. Another important thing is that for a in integer ai, ai has to be greater than or equal to 1 and it has to be less than or equal to 2 times n. And this is an important thing here. What this gives you is that if your integers as a product are going larger than 2n, you don't even need to check those particular indices. So let me give you an example. If you had an array, so primarily ai into aj, if this thing goes greater than equal to, to greater than 2n, you don't even need to check this particular ai into aj product. The reason is that i plus j at max can go to 2n. In fact, not even 2n, it can at max go to 2n minus 1 because you set i equal to the last index, which is n, and j equal to the second last index, which is n minus 1, and you get 2n minus 1. So the maximum sum of indices you can get is 2n minus 1. So anything, any product of a i a j that is greater than or equal to 2 times n, is something that you don't even need to check for. Let's take one example. If the array contains 1 somewhere, then 1 multiplied by anything greater than or equal to 2n does not help. So do not check with numbers greater than or equal to 2n. And this may not be a very useful condition because all the numbers can potentially be greater than uh, less than or equal to 2n yeah all the numbers could potentially be less than 2n so this does not help much and for one you will need to end up checking n numbers 
need to check in numbers how about if you had two somewhere near there So if you had two somewhere in your array, you do not need to check with numbers that are greater than n. And why is that? Because if the number is if a number is n, then two into n will become two times n. If a number is uh, n plus three, then again it will become greater than two n. And as we saw here in this condition, the product should be less than two n. Otherwise, there is no need to check. How about this? In the worst case, how many numbers do you need to check two with? Since all the numbers need to be less than n, you still need to end up checking in the worst case if the numbers were something like one, two, three, four, uh, all the way up to n. In the worst case, you might still need to check n minus one numbers or n minus two numbers, but yeah, order of n. So still need to check n numbers. But it will get better. Let's see. How about three? So you don't need to check with numbers less than equal to two n by three that are greater than equal to two n by three. You don't need to check three with any of those numbers. So since you can only check with numbers that are less than or two n by three, how many numbers would be there? you only need to check with 2n by 3 numbers therefore in the worst case because since the, all the numbers are distinct let's take n equal to 5 then if the numbers were 1 2 3 4 5 you need to check 3 with at most 10 by 3 numbers 10 by 3 equals to 3 yeah so you just need to check it with 1 2 that's it you don't need to check it with 3 and 4. So 1, 2 and 3 are. 10 by 3 is 3. So you need to check it with 1, 2 and 3. But 3 itself gets included. So it's actually less than 2n by 3. But in the worst case, you need to check it with 2n by 3 numbers. Similarly, for i. If you had a number i in the array, you do not need to check it with anything that is greater than or equal to 2n by i. And that means you only need to check 2n divided by i numbers. So let's do a time complexity analysis here. This is big O of n. Again, maybe for 2 also, note it down as big O of n. Then 2n times by 3. Then 2n times by 4. then 2n times by 5 and so on this if your array were to be like 1 2 3 4 and n and all the integers are distinct so this will be your worst input in fact so what you could actually do is this on plus on is nothing but on so n plus 2n by 3 since it's asymptotic analysis i can call it n by 3 n by 4 n by 5 and then yeah n by n which is 1 this is basically one second yeah this is nothing but uh, n log n you can find the sum of the series 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 4 it ends up approximately equal to n uh, log n and it becomes n log n take n common then the sum of that series so if you were able to do it correctly only check the numbers that you really need to check it the brute force will end up being an n log n solution now i will implement it to make it more clear this was just a proof why the brute force solution is actually n log n if you were to check the integers with only the required integers
or if you were to check the indices only with the required indices let's try to code it up quickly and it will make more sense then so we have t test cases and i'll take input n so i have a vector of integers what i'll do I'm, is I'm, is i'm going to sort this vector to basically make it value wise sorted and then have the indices along with them to check the conditionals so these are my nums and let me loop over them Yeah, that's it, I guess. And now just the brute force we implemented earlier. So if nums at i into nums at j, is there any chance of a overflow? There is a potential chance of an overflow because uh, n can be 10 power 5 and the numbers can be 2 into 10 power 5 then yeah there is a chance of an overflow. So 1 ll into nums at i into nums at j if this is equal to Okay, let's try it out. One one three looks all right. Let's see if it works. Hopefully, it will work. So, if you like the video, make sure that you hit the like button. And I'll very soon bring out the problem number three. But actually, I'm not going right now because it gave me a TLE for some reason. Let's see what could go wrong in this. Oh, yeah, of course, of course. I'm really sorry about that. What we need to do here is if these two numbers are actually greater than if the product of these two numbers is greater than your uh, two times of n. then just break out you don't really need to go ahead this was the actual optimization we did for some reason i did not implement it and i'll submit it again this is good we got to see why the optimization was important yep it got accepted so guys thanks a lot for watching make sure that you subscribe to the channel and in the next video we'll do same differences thank you bye bye